Well, we're starting a new series today. We're starting a series linked to our 40 days of prayer and fasting. And uh, this morning, we're going to look at the rhythm of Scripture. Shay's going to come and speak in a moment. Before Shay comes up, I'm just going to read 2 Peter 1, verse 16 to 20. Peter writes this. We did not follow cleverly invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with, you, with him on that sacred mountain. And we have the word of the prophets made more certain. And you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. So Shay's going to come up. It's warm in here. It's the second time Shay's spoken this, this message. Can we make him feel extra welcome? Good morning, church. Well, I hope you're getting ready for prayer and fasting for today's fasting and prayer starting tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm sure you're also looking forward to that. So um, last Sunday, you know, John spoke about the importance of prayer and fasting, and I, and I just want to encourage us to be expectant, to get involved, to participate you know, the Bible says that they that wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagle. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So my prayer is as we wait on the Lord in this 40 days prayer and fasting, my prayer is as you ask of the Lord, you will receive. I pray that as you seek of the Lord, you will find him. As you knock on the door, the doors will be open unto you. I pray for healing. I pray for supernatural breakthrough. I pray for our town, our community, our nation. I pray for the kingdom of God to be established in our hearts. And I pray for the will of God to be done on earth as it is done in heaven. I pray that God will grant you your heart desire and God will bless your heart. God will bless your family in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. Right, um, so as Richard said, um, we're starting a new disciple series, Life Given Reading. So today I'm going to be speaking on the reading of scripture. But before I do, let me tell you the story of what happened to me over a decade ago. You know, I was walking in the streets of, of, of London and, and, and an elderly man, I guess it should be in his early 70s, he called me and asked if he could speak to me. And I said, yes, sure. And then this man started a kind of a blessed adventure, you know, the blessed adventure we did some time ago, right in front of his house. And he started speaking to me about Jesus. And then he went inside the house, came back outside with a Gideon Bible. How many of you remember the Gideon Bible? The New Testament Gideon Bible. And he brought it out and started speaking to me about Jesus, opened the Gideon Bible, showed me um, the, the table of contents, where to find help where I need help. And I was just wondering in my heart that only if this man knew that I'm a Christian, only if this man knew that I've got Bibles, I've got study Bibles, I've got concordance, I've got commentaries, dictionary Bible. But of course, I collected the, uh, the Gideon Bible and I got home that night. Then Abby, my wife, gave me a shocking news about um, a change in, in application that we are, we're about to make which would, you know, significantly have an impact on our application. So we got so worried that evening, Abby and I, and the next day, I was, feel, I was just so overwhelmed and worried. I couldn't even go to work that morning. So frustrated, trying to figure things out, trying to sort things out, trying to fix things, but there was nothing. Until around 4 p.m. that next day, I remember that 
a man spoke to me the previous day. And then I told Abby about the, the man that I met and what the man did, you know, is that he spoke to me about Jesus and, of course, he gave me a Gideon Bible. So I went straight, I got the Bible, the Gideon Bible, and Abby and I just went straight to the table of content and we found the, 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 the scripture or the topic that was relevant to our circumstance that, that particular time. And what we found was Jesus calming the storm. And we read that passage. After reading the passage, Abby and I realized that we haven't even had breakfast that day. We have not done anything. We are just going around, booting, uh, 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 going around looking for a solution. But after reading the passage, we realized that we have not even prayed. And right there we prayed. And after prayer, Abby made a call and right there was the breakthrough. But the, the, the point here is the fact that we read that scripture and we were strengthened. It was the, by the scripture that we found it so easy to trust the Lord. We found it so easy, you know, just reading that Jesus came in the storm. We felt right there that that storm, that particular storm has been calmed by Jesus. And that was when we were lifted up. That was when we were strengthened by the word of God. And that was when it was so easy for us to trust in the Lord. And I wonder if you have ever experienced something like that where you've been strengthened by the word of God. Where you've been strengthened by the scripture. Where it's come alive and spoken directly into your circumstances. Or how do you feel about scripture? What place does the scripture have in your life? Is it the living word of God in your life or does it just feel like another thing to do on your to-do list? Do you have a life-given reading of scripture in your life? So what I want to do today is to answer three questions. One, why do we need a reading of scripture? And two, what stops us from developing a reading of scripture. And then three, how do we develop a reading of scripture? So number one, why do we need a reading of scripture? We need it because it is inspired by God. It is the, is, is the word of God being inspired. It says in, in, in 2 Peter chapter one, it says that above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things, but men inspired and moved by the Holy Spirit to write down what is spoken by God. So men did not just start writing the scripture. They were moved by the Holy Spirit. They were moved by God to write down the scripture. And in, in, in Paul's letter to the Galatian church in chapter 1, Paul says that, brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the gospel that I preach to you, I want you to know that the, the good news, the message of the living God that I'm preaching to you wasn't taught. It wasn't from human origin. It's, Paul said, I did not receive that message from any man, nor was I taught it of it. I received the message, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ by revelation from Jesus Christ. So the word of God is revelation. It is power. It is inspired by God. And in Paul's letter to Timothy, again, it says that all scripture is God-breathed. All scripture, not some, all is God-breathed. So essentially when you are reading the Bible or when you are studying the Bible, that is God's inspiration into your life. When you pick up the Bible and read, that is God speaking directly into you. That is God's revelation and that is God breathing, God breathing life into you and you are responding back in prayer. And another reason we develop the reading of scripture is, is because it is life. Jesus says in Matthew 4 verse 4 and the same in Luke 4 verse 4, it says that man shall not live by bread alone. But on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the life Jesus is talking about in, in Matthew is, 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 is in, in the scripture, is, it, it encompasses 
all spiritual life, uh, um, physical life, mental life, and emotional life. Everything in life, every perception in life, every attitude, every action must be understood in the light of the word of God. Let me put it this way. There is no life apart from the, law, uh, from, from the word of God. You derive life from the word of God. The Bible says that the just, the righteous one shall live by faith. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're going to live by faith, you have to hear the word of God. You have to read the word of God. You have to study the word of God. So the word of God is life. And in Hebrews, again, the Bible says that the word of God is living, it's quick, it is active, it is strong, it is powerful, it is sharper than two-edged sword. The word of God is life. So if you want life in fullness and you want, the richest, you want it in the richest sense, you have to read and study the word of God. And you have to allow the word of God to transform your life. You've got to love the word of God. You've got to feed on the word of God. You've got to hunger for the word of God because it is the greatest food and is the most digestible food on earth. It provides the truth that will bring you and I satisfaction. Everything we need to know about God, everything we need to know about our life, everything we need to know about salvation, about time, about the future, about salvation, everything you need to know about eternity, all contained in the word of God. And the Bible written over a period of of, of 1,500 years has been protected and has been preserved by God and by God himself. To this day that it remains faithful to his original revelation. Nothing missing in the world. Nothing is broken. It is life. The Bible is the theme of everything that we do. And we believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe in the sufficiency of the word of God. It says that the word that I speak to you, they will not come back to me void. But it will go and it will accomplish the purpose of which I've sent the world. So the world is sufficient to accomplish every purpose of which the world is sent. So when, when God speaks to you, when God speaks, it happens, you know. It's not like when we speak. You know, if, if I say something, then I will need to go and action what I say. If I say I'm going to go somewhere, then I will literally go and, and fulfill what I say. But when God says it, his word is his power. It is active right there. Just like when God said, let there be light. And there was light. God doesn't need to move. Once he says it, it happens. Once he's spoken it, it will come to pass. That is the word of God. And, 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 and when you hear God speaking to you in his word, when you pick up the Bible and, and, and you study it and you hear the voice of God, that is God's power coming into your life. When you read the word of God and God is speaking to you through inspiration, through revelation, through life in the word of God, that is God's reality coming into your life. And if you want your prayer life to be meaningful, you need to deep into the word of God. You need to deep into the word of God. The passage um, Richard read earlier, it says, Paul, Paul is saying that we did not follow Cleverly devised story. Peter is saying that what we are telling you about the scripture is not a myth. It is not fables. It's it's not fairy tales. It's not just kind of a Marvel story or a superstar or a Superman story. No. It is a supernatural event that took place. We were there. Peter is saying that we we, we were eyewitnesses. Peter was there. John was there. James was there. And Peter was referring to the the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus was being transfigured right in their presence. It is real. It is authentic. There is authority in the world. They didn't just write down what they feel like writing. They wrote down what they have been inspired by God. They wrote down what they witnessed. 
Peter said we were there and, and they saw Elijah. The, uh, Elijah appeared and Moses appeared right in front of them at the Mount of Transfiguration. And, and Peter said, oh, should, should we build a tabernacle? One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while Peter was speaking, they heard a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well placed. Listen to him. That is divinity connecting to humanity. God speaking from heaven and they heard it on earth. It is the word of God. It is real. It is powerful. It is powerful. And Peter is saying that, that this, 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 this event actually took place. The supernatural event that took place in the fulfillment of specific prophecies. They are meant to fulfill prophecies in our lives. They are meant to fulfill prophecies. The word of God is life. It is the revelation of God. It is the inspiration of God. And it is real. It is authentic. It is sufficient. So it is important for us to have a reading of scripture. Because it is God's word for your life. It is the inspiration word of God. And the third thing is because it reveals Jesus to us. The whole of scripture from Genesis to Revelation points to one person and that is Jesus Christ. And we sometimes, you know, we fall in, into the trap of thinking or reading the Bible that see if, uh, uh, it's, it's all about me or it's all about my life. No, the word of God is not about you. It's not on your own account. The word of God is on the account of Jesus. Tim Keller said, there are two ways to read the Bible. You, you, you can read the Bible as if it's about you and what you must do and what you have to do in order to get the blessing. Or you can read the Bible or every part of the Bible as if it's all about Jesus and what he has done for you. The Bible reveals Jesus to us in all his splendor. It reveals Jesus to us in all his glory. And let me, let, me, let me read what um, Andrew Wilson wrote about, um, about Jesus Christ. He tried to explain to us that the old Bible, the old scripture is all about Jesus Christ. So from um, the book Un Unbreakable, it's going to be a lengthy word, so bear with me. Um, it says that Jesus is the new Adam who passed his garden test by submitting to the will of the Father crushed the snake and gave life to the dead rather than the death to the living. Jesus is the new Eve, the ancestor of, our new, of all new life, through whom the promised rescue finally comes about. Jesus is the new Abel, whose blood announces the family feud, murder and death on the way out. And the subsequent generation will be acquitted rather than being condemned. Jesus is the new Enoch who knows God, walks with him, and is not subject to, to the power of the grave. Jesus is the new Noah who finds favor in the eyes of the Lord. And in whom humans are rescued from the judgment they deserve. Jesus is the new Abraham, who trusts God, leaves his homeland to start a new nation and ends up inheriting the world with his galaxy of descendants. Jesus is the new Isaac, the miraculous child offered as a sacrifice out of obedience to God and rescued from death when all seemed lost. Jesus is the new Jacob who saw heaven opened received the promise, wrestled with God, and commissioned 12 guys to bless the nation. Jesus is the new Joseph, the, the beloved son who, who said, who, 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 sorry, the beloved son who is sold for the price of a slave, abandoned and left for dead, but who remains faithful and then gets lifted up 
by the right hand of the king of the world. And that is just the book of Genesis. Jesus is everywhere, anywhere you open in the Bible. Amen. So when you pick up the Bible, read it on the account of Jesus, not on your own account. Because it's all about Jesus and what he has done. Jesus is the Lamb of, of God. Jesus is the one that has become the, the, the atoning sacrifice. He's the one that takes our sin and nails it on the cross. Jesus is the one that exchanged our sinful nature. The Bible says that he who knew no sin and he has been made sin for us in order for us to have his righteousness. And that is where it gets personal. For me, that is where it gets personal. That is where it becomes an encounter when you're reading the Bible, seeing Jesus in the Bible. And that is the good news. That is the word of God coming into your life. And that will want to make you to long for him, to know him. Paul says that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That will want you to know him, long for him day, night. Bible says that uh, 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 they will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water because they seek the face of the Lord every day and night. So if all of this is true about the word of God, if it is true that the scripture is actually inspired word of God, if it is where we find life, and if the scripture is where we encounter Jesus, so the question is, what stops us from developing a rhythm of scripture. What stops you? Because it, 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 the reality is many, many, many Christians don't, they don't have rhythm of scripture in their life. Many Christians have never read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation once in their life. Some don't even know how to read the Bible. They've never picked up the Bible before. So what are the barriers? standing on our way to develop a reading of scripture and how can we overcome those barriers one difficult to understand for so many of us we find it difficult to understand the scripture when you pick up the bible you don't have a clue of what the bible is saying yes i get it you know given Given the, the, the cultural differences, you know, the Old Testament ways of doing things, you know, the different styles of, of literature, it could be so difficult to understand. You know, I remember when I first started reading the Bible, I struggled. I struggled. I managed to get to the book of Jeremiah, and there, right there, I gave up. I never picked it up after some time. Then I started reading all over again. So how can we overcome this barrier. It is through the help of the Holy Spirit. We need to invite the Holy Spirit where you, you pick up the Bible, ask for help. Jesus says, I'm going to send you a comfort. I will teach you all things. Paul says that it, it wasn't by me. It was, it was Jesus' revelation. So you need the help of the Holy Spirit teaching you how to read the word of God. Because without the Holy Spirit, if you pick up the Bible, you read it, it's just going to be for an information's sake. You're just going to read it for an information and not for revelation. You know, the Pharisees and, and, and the teachers of the law, they, they, they read the Bible, they read the scripture, they, they probably studied the scripture and they probably memorized the scripture. But when the author and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus, when he showed up, they didn't recognize him and they crucified him. Because we're just reading for information. So I want to encourage you, don't read for information. Read for revelation. And that revelation only comes through the help of the Holy Spirit. And it is only revelation that will now bring the transformation in your life. So ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, there was a time in my life I was going through a difficult, you know, season. And, um, you know, everything, I was so confused. No sense of direction. Nothing. I was, I was still a young Christian, and I almost gave up my Christianity. But one Sunday afternoon, that season, I, I, I was having a nap. 
And right from my sleep, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit telling me to read a particular scripture in the book of Psalm. And I jumped out of bed and picked up my Bible. And I was reading that passage of the, of the scripture in, 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 in Psalm. I was, I was crying as I was reading that passage. It wasn't the first time I've read the passage, but this time, around, this time around, I was on a journey with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is teaching me right there as I was reading. He's op he opened the eyes of my understanding, opened wisdom unto me, and I was able to understand. And right there, I was getting the sense of direction. I was getting the voice of the Holy Spirit telling me what to do next. It was so real for me. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit will help our weakness. It says that the Holy Spirit bears our weakness and it will teach you all things. So when else you pick up the Bible, ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. That's the promise of God. That's the promise. Jesus said, I will send my spirit. I will send the comforter and it will teach you all things. It will teach you everything about the word of God. So you can ask for help, but also there are tools to help us. We have different kind of, we are so blessed with unlimited resources online, website, different kind of app, version app, Bible Gateway app, different commentaries. We've got different Bible dictionary that can help. We've got software, Bible tools, podcast. You can even play a podcast and can be hearing the voice, I mean, the, the, the word of God being, you know, uh, 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 um, spoken to you. So we've got tools and also we've got people that can help. We've got people, we are blessed as, uh, as a church. And one of the joys that we, we are being part of the community and being part of the um, family of God is that we have one another. We, we can ask someone to help in church. You can ask someone from your small group to help in understanding. You know, there was a man, I mean, this kept on going through my head, so let me just say this. Um, this man, you know, picked up the Bible in the book of Acts, I think, and um, he was just reading Isaiah and he didn't understand. And the Bible says that uh, uh, Philip, wherever he was, that one of the apostles, you know, just, you know, by some way, he just found himself with, with this man reading the Bible. And he asked the man, the eunuch, do you understand what you're reading? And the man said, no, how will I understand? And right there, Philip helped this man to understand the scripture. And the, the, uh, his eyes was opened. And the next day he said, oh, what are we waiting for? Can't you just, you know, baptize me right there? That is... People helping out, you know, in helping you to understand the scripture. So the fact that some part of the scripture are difficult to understand, that can be a barrier. But it is a barrier if we let it be a barrier because we've got help from the Holy Spirit. We've got help online, tools, and we've got help from one another. So don't let that be a barrier. Another barrier that people complain about is time. Well, I don't, I'm, I'm so busy. I've got work. I wake up early. I do this. I have plans for, for the day. And it's hard to set a time for the scripture. But if we want to be really honest with ourselves, we, 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 we know that we set time for things that are important to us. We set time for it. That time we come. And if don't have time, for the reading of scripture. That is an indication that reading of scripture is not that important to you. You have to set up time. You have to be intentional about it. You have to be able to set time, prioritize it, and be consistent with your devotion to the scripture. And another barrier is when it doesn't feel like it's doing anything in my heart. I've read it, I didn't feel anything. It's so dry, no life giving, so I give up. It is true, we won't always feel that life changing every time we, we read a scripture, but that doesn't mean that we should give up. You know, it's like seed, you know, being germinated in the dark. Bible said that seed time and harvest. So just keep going on, you know, keep reading it. Whether it's life changing or just keep reading it. And, as, and each time you read the Bible, you know, you become more familiar with what the Bible is saying. And that familiarity will make it easier for you to understand. So you just have to keep doing it. So if you pick up the Bible for the first time, you know, and um, you read a scripture and it's, it's so discouraging or you don't understand what you're reading, just keep 
on doing it. Don't give up. By the time you continue with it, to begin to make more sense, you know, and you beginning to find a purpose, and it will start making a change in, in your heart. So as I said earlier, you know, Jesus tells us to feed on the word of God. To feed on the word of God because it is nourishing to our soul. We need to feed on the word of God. And it's just like eating a meal, you know. You can eat it quickly. It will still nourish your body. But when you take your time and chew it on it properly, it helps you to digest better. So if reading the Bible is like eating a meal, then meditating is like digesting the meal. So you come to a level whereby you don't just read, you meditate on the word of God, you chew on the verse, you can just pick a verse, but just be a line. It might just be a word. It might just the fact that you need to believe. I was reading the other day, Jesus just said, just believe. And I was wondering, why is it just believe? You can just be that word believe. It might just be a couple of verses and it's going to start asking questions. What does this tell me about God? What is God trying to say to me from this passage or from this scripture or from this verse or from this word of God? And ask the Holy Spirit for help. And then go and apply what you have read. And that's when it starts making sense to you in your heart. You know, there is a spiritual practice page on, on our website and one of the one of those practices is called um, Letzio Divina. It's a way of reading and meditating on the scripture. So just, you know, if you want to try meditating or you're struggling in, in meditating on the scripture, you can just go online and check this, uh, uh, um, this practice out. It's going to help you with meditation. Because you don't just read the Bible, you meditate on it and then you apply the word of God in your life. So lastly... How do I develop a reading of scripture? You've got to have the desire. And that is key. You've got to have a desire with a conviction that you're going to do something about it. Because without a desire, you're not going to start anything. So you've got to have a desire. And the next thing, you've got to be disciplined. You've got to be able to to set out time. You've got to be able to be consistent and not give up. You've got to be able to prioritize your time. You've got to be disciplined in the word of God. And it is with this um, desire matched with discipline, that is when you'll be able to break through into delight. And that is when you begin to find the word of God, you know, easy to read and being spontaneous about it. So you've got to have discipline. You've got to have the desire, then you break through into the light. So if you are struggling, if you think you are still struggling with the word of God or developing a rhythm of scripture, check and ask yourself, do I have the desire? And if you don't have the desire, ask God. Ask. It says it will grant you the desire of your heart. Ask God to give you the desire for you to have a rhythm of scripture. And if you have the desire... And you don't have the discipline, add discipline to it. Be conscious about it. Be, 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 be intentional about it. Set a time and be disciplined. And be, 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 be intentional about it. And consistent above all be, and persist. Be persistent. And it is through this uh, persistency and perseverance that you'll be able to start experiencing the delight in the word of God. And one other thing that really, that's really important in developing a reading of Scripture is for you to be realistic about it. Just think of one thing that you could do to start a reading of Scripture. You know, we did a pilot in our small group last Thursday on this question that what is that one thing you could do to start a reading of Scripture? And someone said that what they are going to be doing is to set, I mean, is to give up 6 o'clock um, BBC News. Every six o'clock, every day, that we're going to give up BBC News and they're going to be using that period for the reading of scripture. And of course, the person said their TV is broken anyway, so that makes it easier for them. <laughs> that makes it easier. So that is realistic. TV is broken, you know, BBC six o'clock, pick it up and read. 
very realistic. And another person said that they are going to start doing meditation while they are cycling. So just find that one realistic thing that you need to start doing. You know, it's easy for us to hear this talk about reading of scripture and you can just say, yes, I'm going to start. I'm going to start. I'm going to start from Deuteronomy or Leviticus or Revelation. And I'm going to dedicate from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. You're not going to do that. You won't start. Be realistic. Just think of one thing. Think of the next step that you need to do with the rhythm of scripture. You know, just like we did in, in the giving challenge where you think of the next step of what you're going to do. So it's the same. Think of the next thing that you're going to be doing with the reading of scripture. So what is the next step you're going to take with scripture? For example, if, if there's no reading at all, if you haven't started at all, just start. You can start with this, uh, uh, um, um, the, the, the daily devotional that we've got for 40 days fasting and prayer. Pick it up every day, read it. That could be a starting point for you. And for some, it might just be the fact that you are going to follow um, uh, an app. You know, some are doing uh, um, the church plan for New Testament or Old Testament in a year. So you can also follow the hub with, with, with the church. And if you have started that reading or uh, 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 and you think you need more time to meditate, that will be your next step. So you need to start meditating on the word of God. Start asking questions. What does the scripture say? Why is it saying this? What is God trying to tell me? So start doing the meditation as well. And if you already started that reading, you've got the meditation, but you haven't started the studying of the word of God, start. That might be your next step where you look at the tree of the Bible and you look at every branch of the Bible, then you turn to the leaf of every scripture in the Bible. So you need to start. You can, you can, you can start with, you know, commentary Bible or, 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 or um, uh, um, um, dictionary Bible or you know, just look for tools that can help you in studying the Word of God. So again, what one thing are you going to decide on to do? What is that one step you're going to take to start the reading of Scripture from tomorrow? What is that one step? And if you have thought of that one step, can I just encourage you to develop a desire for for that, for you to be able to, to do that. Develop a desire. And can I also encourage you to add discipline to that desire and commitment to that desire and persevere until you break through into the light of the word of God. I know it's not going to be by might. It is not going to be by power. It is going to be by, this, by the help of the Holy Spirit. So just start doing something about the scripture. And you will see that the more time you spend getting to know Jesus Christ, being revealed to us in the scripture, it's going to be the more time you will begin to understand and appreciate who he is in our life. Amen. Praise God.